Hi guys, Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury Channel. And today guys, I uh, had the chance to go into Hourglass Brisbane and uh, I wanted to do a comparison and I was very fortunate. The guys at Hourglass Brisbane really, really look after me. And uh, what I wanted to do was compare, compare my Patek World Time, the 5110J, and I wanted to compare it to the World Time in Rose Gold. That's the new 5230. And I was very fortunate. The guys at Hourglass arranged for it to come up just so I could preview it on my channel. So uh, let's take a look. And I want you to tell me, what do you think is a sexier World Time? The, uh, the 5110 in Yellow Gold or the new 5230 in rose gold. Now, the interesting thing is, is that uh, the, the 5110, it uses the same 240 based movement as the later version. The case has changed. The, the way they handle the lugs has changed. And they've also done away, they've done away with the crown guards. The crown guards, they've done away with it. Um, so I got to tell you, in all honesty, how could you really not be over the moon with either world time? I mean, these are incredibly sexy watches. And um, I've got to tell you, I've got a new love affair with my world time. Yes, I was thinking of selling it, but after today, when I went into the store, I've just really fallen in love with the one I've got, the 5110. So it, it's really reinvigorated my love and lust, lust for the brand. So uh, let's take a look and tell me which world time do you prefer? Let's take a look, guys. Okay, guys, let's take a uh, bit of a sticky beak at the Patek World Time. Let's firstly look at the 5230. This is a rose gold version. And uh, this is we're down at Hourglass in Brisbane. They very kindly let me photograph and film this watch. Um, this here, the 5230, uh, is 38.5 uh, mils. It uses the 240 micro rotor Patek movement, which is the same uh, movement used in the uh, 5110 and the 5130. Uh, they've got an interesting guilloche arrangement on the dial. They've changed the font of all the countries, and they're also using very um, uh, vintage-type hands. The hour and minute hand are kind of uh, uh, reminiscent of the uh, uh, 5110, if not that, the the, the previous version from the 60s let's compare the two wow side by side um i don't see any inferiority of the 5110 it doesn't look a lot smaller a yeah, smidgen smaller but it's kind of it um it looks a bit bigger with the the crown guards there kind of accenting the case dynamics um looking at a side angle there we can see the different lug arrangement the lug arrangements changed um with the the hands the hour and the minute hands i've got to be completely honest and say i really prefer them on the 5110 and also the guilloche. I mean, I don't hate it on the 5230, but the guilloche on the 5110, I think, is uh, streets ahead. The other thing that really shocked me comparing the two was the font of the countries. And if I'm going to be completely honest, I think the font looks heaps better on the 5110. Just the font, just the color of the uh, the text I think it kind of looks better I also like the way on the 5110 the Patek Philippe Geneva logo there it just blends in a bit more on the the newer model it it just seems to be not as tastefully not as tastefully done it's still very tasteful but not as tastefully done and um I i'm not sure if i really like the new 
the way the guillochet has been done. I think um, that is something I do prefer in the, the older model. I must say, the new case design is uh, quite interesting. Um, it's very, very retro, whereas the uh, 5110 was very much a 90s slash 2000s type product. The introduction of Crown Guards on a paddock high-end dress watch world time they've done away with it now is this a good thing is it a bad thing what do i really really think and it's an interesting thing it's an interesting thing that they they have actually done but uh um i i do love the crown guards on my uh patek patek philippe one of the premium names in the world there when it comes to world times Patek really owns this upmarket niche. This is the most famous maker of the World Time Complication. Shaw Vacheron Constantine has released a beautiful 36 uh, time zone World Time. But I think when you think of World Times, you think of a 5110 uh that's 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 the one that springs to mind i do love this new model i gotta be honest with you if i was uh extremely well off and um i just had to have a brand new patek for myself i don't think you can really go wrong with a five two three zero it's quality it's beautiful well made so many wonderful features of the Patek just carry through. It's got the uh, deployant buckle. That's the solid gold 18 karat buckle. We carry that through. Uh, it's been updated slightly, updated slightly, but it's it's still just it's just an amazing piece. And um, I, I think realistically, um, the Patek five two three zero is just. It's just superb. They they both use that <coughs> two four zero movement. See the paddock two four zero movement. It just celebrated its fortieth anniversary. The two four zero movement. That movement really is the best paddock automatic movement. And um, I think I think that's the whole thing. So many people. Uh, don't quite get it. They don't understand Patek. But the 324 movement, I love. It's a great movement. I had a similar type movement in my Calatrava and also my annual calendar. But I think the top end movement in Patek, automatic movement, is the 240. And uh, I've got to tell you, if you've got 62,000 Australian dollars, that's roughly 50 grand US, I can't think of a more sexy watch to buy this is an incredible it's an heirloom i mean you're looking at this watch here it doesn't um yeah this is for people who have absolutely everything they have the finest in cars the finest in in wives and the finest in side pussy the finest side pussy money can buy and uh they buy a watch to state their position in life and uh, i've got to tell you patek philippe there is no grander classic than a Patek Philippe. Thank you, Hourglass Brisbane. I really do appreciate you allowing me to film this absolute gorgeous watch. Thank you from Archie Luxury, the Pontiff's Pontiff. <laughs>
Hey guys, my name is Paul Pluter. I'm the method actor who plays Archibald Chesterfield III, AC3. Guys, guys, I need a bit of help. I need a bit of help. I need a bit of help. It's very hard running a YouTube channel relying on Google Ads alone. I'm in a special niche and I speak my mind and I've, I don't have all those Seiko wannabes, all the people who want assurance about their affordable shitters. So I've got to really try hard to bring in the revenue. Guys, if you like my content, if you think I'm a great, great chap to have around, why don't you help me out? There's a number of ways you can help me out. This will keep me full time on YouTube. Look in the description of this video for some ways you can help me. You could sponsor me on Patreon. That allows you to send a small monthly amount to me every month. It can be a dollar, it can be a hundred dollars, whatever you can afford. The next way you can help me is, well guys, I, I really need some money to keep things going. Paid reviews. On the Paul Pluto channel, I run paid reviews. For as little as 20 US dollars, I'll give you an opinion of your collection, of what you're looking at, I'll try and answer. There's heaps of other ways you can help me. I do telephone consultancy. For 50 US dollars, I will talk to you on Skype or WhatsApp and answer your horological or personal problems. Any questions, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. Now guys, please help us out. Look down below and if you, if you, if you could help us out, I will stay here and make videos full time on YouTube. Okay.